chapter 25. You know, it's amazing to me how consistent God's creation is. What did we talk about on the way over here, Lucas? A uh, lunar eclipse that's coming tomorrow or the next day, I don't remember. It's going to be the longest lunar eclipse in 600 years. But every 600 years, this is going to happen. Every so many years, we have a solar eclipse right on time. The sun rises within a few seconds every the same day of every year. Isn't that consistent? What does it tell you about God? God is consistent. Now, why have why have why is why aren't we consistent? Shouldn't we try to be as, as consistent as God? Shouldn't the world be that way? Why have there been so many wars and nations taking over nations and, and upon, you know, why has that been dominoing for 6,000 years now when the sun and the moon rise at the same time all year long? Huh? God is consistent. Can we blame God for anything? Is God a God of order? Huh? Shouldn't God's people be a people of order? Uh, according to what the Bible says that is? So where are we turned to? Exodus chapter 25. I'm going to read a few texts here and I want y'all to tell me the word that they all that all of them have in common. I can prove that God expects consistency from his people. Huh? You know, we've had the, the, the Noahic people under Noah. We've had the Abrahamic people. We've had the Davidic people, David, King David. We've had those people. We've had the, the people of, of the captivity years. We've had the people now of of Jerusalem, Israel, for all. now what we have for the last 2,000 years, Christianity, Christian. Why? Tell me, tell me, tell me what we find in common. Did I tell y'all what verse? Verse 9, Exodus 25, 9. It's amazing how many times we kind of see this in the Bible. Exodus 25, 9. According to all that I show thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of the instruments thereof, even so ye, even so shall ye make it. Y'all got that? Y'all take a mental picture of that verse. Go to Exodus, or go to verse forty in that same chapter. We went down to verse forty. And look that you make them after their pattern, which was showed thee in the mount. Now, take a mental picture. Go down to Numbers chapter 8. Go over to Numbers chapter 8. Numbers chapter 8. Sounds like we're all there. Verse 4. In this work of the candlesticks was of beaten gold. Unto the shaft thereof, unto the flowers thereof, was beaten work. According to the pattern which the Lord had showed Moses, so he made the candlesticks. Are you starting to see a common denominator in these verses yet? Huh? Yes. Oh, want another one? How about Joshua chapter 22?
you all remember Joshua, he was, he was Moses' protege. He took over. When Moses was done, guess who took over? Joshua. Guess what? Things didn't change. What do we say about God? He, he don't change. He is consistent. We're not consistent. I, I, I got to tell you, there's been a, there's been a few times, there's been a couple nights this week. I didn't, I didn't even pray. That's not like, uh, that's not consistent. Makes for a bad night. Makes for a bad next day, honestly. But God is always consistent. Joshua chapter twenty-two, verse twenty-eight. Now, you always got to remember that you could come to me for help or I could come to you for help, but it's limited. You do not have the resources and I do not have the resources of God. See what I'm saying? Verse 28, did I tell you the verse yet? Verse 28, Joshua 22, 28. Therefore said we that it shall be when they should say to us, to our generation in time to come, that we may say that we may say again, behold the pattern of the altar of the Lord, which our fathers made, not for burnt offerings, not for sacrifices, but it is a witness between us and you. What is that pattern? A witness between us and, huh, how do we, how do we be a, a good witness? Uh, based on what we've read so far in the Old Testament, how can we be a good witness? By being consistent. Consistent in our prayer, consistent in our love, consistent in our behavior, consistent in our singing, and our preaching and our teaching consistency. Now what? How about Hebrews chapter eight? Bring it on down to the New Testament to Christianity, huh? By the way, we're going down. You know, they. You know, God created the heaven. He, cre he put Adam and Eve on earth, and, and it, mankind is not going up, not evolving, not getting better, but ever, t ever since then, it's been going down and down and down. Here we are in Christianity today. By the way, Christianity is going in. Something else is going to take its place. But we are in Christianity today, so let's read Hebrews chapter 8. Did I tell you the chapter? Yeah. Now of the things, verse, five, uh, verse 1. Now of the things we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of majesty in the heavens. A minister of the sanctuary and of the tabernacle. What was all that? A pattern. Consistent pattern. Which the Lord pitched and not man. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Whereof it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. Talking about the priest. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve under the example of a shadow of heavenly things. What is the patterns of the things we have been reading about in the Old Testament? Heavenly things. You know, I, I, I harp on it a lot when I'm preaching and teaching. I say the same things over and over again. But the kingdom of heaven is not heaven. It's a kingdom of heaven. It's patterned after heaven. There's one heaven, one God, and one rule in heaven. And based on that pattern and that consistency, we ought to be down here on earth observing a good, consistent pattern of living. Right? That's what God wants. And we call that a kingdom of heaven. It's a heaven. It's a kingdom that God has provided. A system that God has provided. As Moses was admonished of God when he was at, about to make the tabernacle, 
For she saith he that thou maketh all things according to the what? Oh, there's that word again. Way over there in the New Testament. Ain't that something? Show to thee in the mount. John 14, 5 and 6. John 14, 5 and 6. There's only one way, y'all. There's only always been one way. All the Old Testament patterns pointed to Christ, to Christ. Now, now Christ Jesus came, did he not? So everything that we talk about points what? Back to Jesus Christ. Same thing, just different age. John 14, 5 and 6. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. What is our way today? Jesus Christ. What was the way of Moses? Jesus. But it was through what? Through the worship in the tabernacle and then in David's time and become a temple thing. See how it's all done? Pattern. 1 Timothy 1, 16. Boy, y'all don't. You ain't used to me scripture hopping, are you? 1 Timothy. Timothy 1. One, verse 16. 1 Timothy 1, 16. How be it for this cause, Paul's writing, I obtained mercy. That in me first, Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Is your, is your life, now I, I'm not condemning, I'm not getting on to you, but I, the question must be asked. Is your life a pattern of, Christian, of Jesus Christ? Jesus died, Jesus lived, Jesus died. For all human beings, he loved all human beings. That's what Paul said. I was, I, I, my life is a pattern. Now, you know, you've heard me say that I think the Apostle Paul was the greatest Christian to ever walk on the face of the earth. Man, you ever read about the travels of the Apostle Paul? Man, all that he did, he didn't, they didn't have a car. They didn't have airplanes. They didn't have jet boats, luxury liners. He depended on the wind and horses and feet. And you see where all he went in his, in his little short Christian ministry? Boy, look at us. I live 45 miles from here. How about that? No, not 45 miles. 40 miles? Takes me about 30 minutes to get here. 40 minutes. Uh, you notice I look at my wife and I start throwing around statistics because she's she, she watches the clock more. She's a mama. What mamas do. They, they pay more attention to details than daddy. Paul says his life was a pattern for them which you had believed from hereafter. How about Titus chapter 2, verse 7? Paul wrote to Timothy. I think Paul expected Timothy's life to be a pattern. To them which hereafter should believe on Jesus? Yes, he did. You know, Paul had another protege. His name was Titus. Paul was a walking, living, breathing seminary. <laughs> a traveling seminary. Keep up with him if you can. Verse 7. Titus 2, verse 7. And all things showing thyself, Titus, a pattern of good works. In doctrine... Showing uncorruptness, gravity, that means seriousness, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned. This is the pattern of life that a man ought to have. That he that is contrary, he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say to you. Hmm, to say of you that is. How do you avoid that? 
by showing a pattern of what? Of the things that Paul just said. Be consistent in the things that Paul just told Titus to do. That's consistency right there. You can't go wrong doing that. I thank you for listening to this boring detail, boring message, but I'm telling you, is if you think about it, go think about it. Boring, but it's so wonderful to know, isn't it? That's why we start on time. That's why I think we finish on time. Pattern of good works. Church, house, ought to be nice and clean. This is a very nice facility, by the way. I love it. I love it. From the very first day I walked in that door right there, I was like, wow. They take care of this place. Consistently do. I thank you for that. We ought to be consistent in the way we dress. You show up to church in your pajamas and your flip flops. By the way, people do that. I've seen them do it. That's not a good pattern of works, is it? Get dressed for the Lord. That's good. Get dressed for the people. Why do you get dressed? For the people. I used to. I used to be bad about not dressing up. Boy, I put on just whatever, and just you know, I do have work clothes. But I decided, you know, people. I love people, and they're and as far as I'm concerned. If I want to love them, I ought to at least get dressed for them, fix my hair for them, comb it, comb my hair. A pattern of good works. Where people ought to people ought to see something different, not weird, about us but a consistent pattern of being just different kind of people. Why do you go to church so much? I've heard that so much in my life. Why do you go to church so much? Uh, why don't you go to church at all? i tell you why I go to church so I can be a have a, at least a consistent pattern of that. I can't do much right in this world. I mess up a lot. I'm a sinner. But the one thing I can do right is go to church. I can go to church and I can sing. I can study for Sunday school lessons. I can, I can read the word of God. I can do that. Those are things we can do. And God help me on the things I fail at. But at least do what I can do. That's a good pattern. Do what, you know, we don't have to be miracle workers. We don't have to be the apostle Paul. There's only one of him. Can't be him can't be Jesus, but we can learn from their consistent patterns of living, can't we? Thank you for your attention.